I'm going to talk to you about how to improve your watercolour painting. Let's get started. I'm working on cold press 300 grams paper. For a full list of all the materials I'm using, please see the description below. I'm starting off with some Windsor Red. You can use cadmium red. And I'm just painting a poppy shape very loosely with very dilute red using my size 12 round brush. You can, if you like, use a poppy photograph to help you with the shape. But sometimes I quite like using my imagination because I don't have the pressure of copying it. And this way you can be really loose and I'm literally winging it. I just want to have a little play. And this way of practicing really helps you to improve your watercolor painting. And I would suggest practicing your sketchbooks beforehand before you start the actual painting. So I'm mixing up a slightly creamier red here and painting it damp into wet so my brush isn't as wet and I'm rinsing the brush now taking off the excess water on my paper towel so the brush is damp and I'm blending this slightly darker red it's the same color Windsor red into the petal of the poppy there adding a little bit more Windsor red around the outside edge again slightly creamier so there's less water more paint just to build up the mid-tonal values here and I'm using my size six round brush and it just enables me to paint smaller marks and it's a really good exercise in practicing watercolor techniques working wet into wet damp into wet, damp into damp and building up darks and I've, as you can see there I added a little bit of pink to the red. You can use alizarin crimson or permanent rose to make the red slightly darker and I'm painting this damp into damp. Still using my size 6 round brush working in the sort of more central area of the poppy where the tonal value will be a little bit darker. So I am actually dropping in a little bit more water at the edge there to push the paint towards the edge to get that lovely dark crisp edge that are characteristic of poppies. As you can see I'm just pushing and dropping in water there having fun with this poppy. So I'm mixing up here a light green, a yellow green for the stem, yellow with a pinch of blue. Any blue will do. You could use cerulean or phthalo blue. So I'm using my size four round brush, painting wet on dry, working my way down to the bottom, adding a little bit more of the phthalo blue and taking the excess off on the palette there so my brush isn't too wet and on my paper towel. And I'm just painting a little bit of dark now on the left hand side of the stem so the lights coming from the right my imaginary light source adding a little bit more of the yellow to that green and just crisscrossing taking the excess off again on my paper towel and crisscrossing as you've got those little spiky bits on the edge of the stem there as it, I work my way down with my size four round brush and it just creates a little bit of texture characteristic to poppy stems. So I'm painting another poppy now. I've got a little bit more confidence now. I'm painting another poppy freehand. And just to compare it to my first poppy where I didn't have any sort of practice beforehand, it's very tight. So just by painting that first poppy, this second poppy is so much more loose and I feel so much more confident. So practicing and warming up, just like you would if you were to say play the piano, practicing piano scales or if you're doing some exercise, you know, sort of doing a bit of stretching really helps to warm you up and build confidence as a result improve your watercolors now i'm using some of the phthalo blue and the yellow to paint kind of the, the back of the poppy there and painting the stem wet on dry on the paper and again painting those sort of spiky bits on the stem using my size four round brush painting with that mid green there just to create some texture what I'm doing actually to this first poppy is I'm using my plastic car to scratch into the surface of the paper, which creates the look of the veins on the poppy petals. So it creates thin, dark lines because the, the paint runs into that scratch. But remember, this is permanent. If you don't want to do it, you could actually paint these wet on dry later. 
So again, building up my confidence here, I'm painting wet on dry, a sort of a smaller poppy in the background, just sort of getting a sort of an overall sort of poppy shape. Again, you may want to get a sort of a reference photograph to help you with the shapes, adding a little bit more of a slightly creamier red just towards the bottom there, letting it run in wet into wet. So mixing up a little bit of the red with a pinch of the red orange, using my size four brush, painting wet on dry, dropping in some of the red on its own there as well, and just kind of building up the shape using very light washes wet on dry and then dropping in wet in wet washes. If you find it a little bit daunting to paint without drawing, you can sketch in outlines there and then fill in with similar techniques and maybe use a reference photograph if it makes you feel more confident and build your confidence. So I'm just using some water just to dilute at the bottom of the petal there, just to extend it. And I'm doing the same with the one directly above using my size four brush. I'm mixing up some cobalt blue here and I'm gonna paint some cornflowers. And I've added a tiny pinch of pink to that as well, a smidge permanent rose will do or alizarin crimson but it's going to be about 90% blue 10% pink any pink will do as you saw they're very dilute color to begin with and then a slightly deeper color so slightly thicker paint less water and I'm painting that at the bottom damp into wet using my size 4 brush so again working wet on dry with my size 4 brush going on with a paler wash to begin with just getting a sort of a really sort of nice curvy shape there so while that's very wet i've decided to paint one just to the left of the star of the show poppy the largest poppy and just sort of painting the shapes in there wet on dry sort of really nice and loose again i'm loosening up more painting the cornflower for the third time so adding a few more here and there, using the cobalt blue with a pinch of the pink, dropping this in damp into wet. So remember the colour is slightly richer and less water. Just dropping in some water at the top there, pushing down as well. Make sure the light's more at the top of the flower because the light is coming from above. So I've decided to change my flower. And I'm actually painting a little pink flower here. I'm not sure of the species, but I just thought I'd have a little play with a very dilute permanent rose. You can use alizarin crimson or opera rose, quinacridone, magenta. Use your favourite colours. You can add your favourite flowers and just keep everything loose. And I'm just painting these wet on dry with my size four brush. I'm not worrying too much about the stems on these. I'll come back to that later. In watercolour, we work light to dark. So I'm starting with those lighter washes and I'm adding a little bit of slightly creamier pink at the bottom again, damp into wet and just sort of shaping that and blending that with a clean damp brush and just making it a little bit bigger. Again, I don't have any outlines to restrict me. So time to paint some seed heads and buds. So using the phthalo blue and yellow mixed together, painting wet on dry, using my size four round brush, just getting the sort of shape here. You may again want to use a reference photograph to see the sort of shape of the seed head and just painting the stem, sort of quite dilute and even sort of just very gently and dilute at the end as well, keeping it all really nice and loose adding another little seed head here wet on dry quite dilute and I've actually just decided to go around now and just add them here and there I'm just adding a little bit of dark to this seed head here and painting in the stem wet on dry keeping everything really super loose adding those spiky bits on the stems really loose as well much more loose than my first stem as well so it just goes to show doesn't it the practice really helps to improve your watercolour painting. Even if you've been painting in watercolour a long time, just have a little play before you start painting. It just builds up that confidence and your timing as well, that feel of that wet medium that can be quite elusive to us sometimes, especially if we're a little bit tight. So practicing before you start painting really can help and you can use your sketchbooks to do this as well.
So I'm mixing up here some Payne's Grey with a little bit of Ultramarine. And it's quite creamy. And I'm painting darks in the centre of the Star of the Show poppy, damp into damp with my size four round brush. Again, this is from my imagination. I always love those poppies that are really brightly red with those dark centers. I just love them. So I'm just sort of trying to emulate that here and just sort of adding a little bit of detail to the center, which I'm gonna paint green. So while that's drying off a little bit, I'm gonna paint some stems on the cornflowers here, wet on dry with my size four brush. If you find that a bit tricky, you can use a smaller brush, a rigger even, or a liner brush, or even a twig. A twig from the garden, dip it into a puddle of paint and draw, and you get some beautiful thin lines. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually painting wet on dry. The painting has dried off on my seed heads here. So it enables me to paint some details wet on dry with a slightly darker green. Um, that's a little bit more blue and less yellow. And I've painted that wet on dry and just adding a few more darks and details here and there and painting some more stems as well. And not even sort of finishing them off, keeping them really loose. You don't have to sort of dot every I or cross every T. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry. What I'm doing now is I'm building up the details and tonal values so the painting looks more 3D. So I'm adding some of the Windsor Red wet on dry with my size 10 round brush to this poppy here on the right. I'm leaving some of the underpainting coming through and also painting with the tip of my brush to create sort of texture and details on the surface of the petals there. Just using the red by itself. So I'm just adding a little bit more dark to this poppy here at the top using the Windsor Red with a pinch of pink just to make it slightly darker and just playing and dropping in colour and seeing what happens. You get some lovely natural effects. So adding some more dark here, wet on dry. Towards the bottom area as well, some of the petals will be lighter so you can just leave those unpainted. So I'm just adding some darks to these pale pink flowers, wet on dry, using a little bit of quinacridone magenta and a touch of opera rose mixed in as well. You can use permanent rose or just add more permanent rose wet on dry. They can be whatever pink you want them to be, but just make them slightly darker at the bottom. And I'm just mixing up a little bit of that cobalt blue. If you don't have cobalt, you can use ultramarine. And I mix that with a touch of pink and painting wet on dry, some darker tonal values. So the paint's slightly richer, slightly creamier, less water, touch more paint. You don't want it too dark though, so you want it to be sort of mid to a dark tonal value. And I'm just lightening the top of it with a clean damp brush here and there, just keeping everything loose. I always find the less you touch the paper with your brush, the better. You don't overwork it. Think of that as a precious thing to do and try not to kind of keep brushing back and forward. Keep it to a minimum and that way you keep your watercolours really fresh. And also if you're working on top of a previously dried layer, it doesn't disturb it. And, it, and because watercolour isn't permanent, so if you keep going back and forth with your brush, you're likely to disturb the paint underneath then it can create a little bit of muddying. As you can see here, I'm just adding some darks and details to the left hand side of the seed head and stems here using my size four brush painting wet on dry, just adding more blue to that green to make it a darker green. And I'm just sort of literally painting minimal brush strokes. Less is more. I'm just creating an impression with feather light touches with the brush tip there. And I find loading my brush with plenty of paint, you can glide it very gently over the top of the dried paint and it's less likely to disturb it as well. So that's a really good tip. So I'm just adding a touch more green here and there to bring my painting to life. And I'm just painting a few leaves wet on dry here and there with my size four round brush. I'm actually adding a few more darks to the cornflowers there just with a little bit more of the cobalt blue damp into damp using my size four brush. 
I've gone back into the star of the show just to add a few more darks using some Payne's Grey, adding a little bit of detail to the centre around that light centre using a mixture of Payne's Grey and red. Adding a little bit of red now to the poppies around the centre and just diluting and blending. A touch more greens here and there just to add some more darks and details. I felt this poppy was too overpowering and it was my first poppy I painted and I don't think I was ever happy with it. So I'm adding some more red to the centre to see if I can improve it and using the brush to pull out some veins and details. That's with my size four round brush. And I'm just adding a few more red marks here. But we've all been here where we're trying to improve something and it just doesn't work. And I, that's why I would say at the beginning of a painting, always practice before you start, because that's what got me into trouble in the first place here. So I'm lifting out now with my paper towel to try to improve things and I'm getting more and more into a pickle. So I think the best thing to do is to let the painting dry. So I'm going to show you how to correct mistakes, which will help you to improve your watercolour painting and give you confidence when you're painting because you know that you can do this it allows you to paint more freely so to correct mistakes as you saw in the last stage wet the paper in the area where you want to lift off the correction with clean water work at it with your brush and lift off with a paper towel and then allow it to dry and then you can paint in your correction so I'm working here wet on dry just using some red just to reshape the center so I'm literally being bold here, painting with these dark marks. This is the Payne's Grey and just sort of working my way around the centre. I made the centre slightly bigger as well, that light centre. It's got a stain of red, but I can work with that. So just sort of reforming everything here. The good thing is the petals are not overworked. It's just that centre that I lost. And because it's dark, I can kind of disguise the correction here so I'm taking my time again I haven't drawn this I'm using my brush to draw with and I'm just trying to reshape the poppy here I'm just adding a little bit of the Windsor red just at the bottom of this center part here and adding a little bit of Payne's grey with red to create some shadow wet on dry and then just blending with a clean damp brush so I'm just painting some of the veins here and creases, wet on dry, just using a dilute Windsor Red with my size four round brush. Just adding a little bit more of the Windsor Red right in the center, really to bring this poppy to life and to really freshen up this area where I lifted off the paint. Adding a few more veins, wet on dry to the left hand side, really to add some details. I've added some pink to the red there as well, just to make the red slightly darker. Rinsing my brush and just blending that mark with a clean, damp brush. And before I overwork this poppy again, I'm going to allow it to dry. And what I'm doing is I'm just finishing off with a spatter using my size four brush, some of the Payne's Grey in the center there to create some textures. I'm also spattering a little bit of red here and there. You don't have to do this, but it's my way of stopping painting. It's a process that I go through and it kind of works. So here is the finished painting. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful to improve your watercolors by practicing before you start the in quotes real painting but also showing you how to correct mistakes so you can paint more freely knowing that you can actually correct any mistakes not that you're going to make any if you have any questions please put them in the comments and if you'd like to support the content that i publish here on youtube why not think about joining my patreon membership you can get access to weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches and you can cancel anytime Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.